Welcome everybody to anticipated releases for the month of November of the year 2020. My name is Nick. I'm Mike. I'm Pat. And I'm Travis. You guys sounded so enthusiastic <laughs> on that. I'm Travis! <laughs> You're like, I'm Mike, I'm Pat. Like, Pat, like, started, like, the, either way, not the point. But um, we actually do have some, uh, this is actually a pretty huge month that's coming up, especially for uh, game releases. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are both getting released this next month. So there is some really big releases that uh, we're super excited to t tell you about. I think each of us come with at least two, possibly a third. So... Who wants to start off by telling them about, uh, telling our lovely viewers what game they're excited about? All right, I, don't rush at the I'll same start. Time. I'll start. Yeah, I, I feel like I never actually start because I don't know. I just never have anything to say. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with the game that I'll definitely not be getting right away, just because I would have to buy an entire system, and I do not have the funds for that right now. But Miles Morales Spider-Man is going to be releasing with the PS5, which is super cool. Um, so basically, from all the gameplay that I've gathered, it's basically the Spider-Man game that everyone seems to adore so much on the PS4, only you're the cool Spider-Man, so you have even more abilities that you can use for the actual uh, combat, such as turning invisible and electricity, which is just dope. Oh, absolutely. S Freaking yeah. dope. So I don't know how they're going to balance being able to just turn invisible and electrocute everything in your path. Um, I don't know if they're like unlockable things, if he's going to have, you know, some sort of stupid amnesia type thing or, you know, his gadgets break, or, you know. So there's different things. It, Travis, is this uh, is this uh, like a sequel to the Spider-Man game that just like recently I, came out? I or is don't it... know if it's a sequel or if it's like a parallel universe type thing because okay. technically Peter Parker well I guess kind of once well, you bring Miles Morales into it it's kind of like Peter Parker is a role model to him but then there's also so many other Spider-Mans that yeah. it's really difficult to pinpoint if it's even in the same timeline or not so <laughs> I think also um, Miles Morales was in the most recent Spider-Man game so maybe it is just kind of like a spin-off or an extension of that game I don't know but because that'd be, that'd yeah. be cool too, too. Yeah. A nod off to the people who played the first one. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting because, like, Miles Morales is, like, a different personality than, like, Peter Parker. Like, one of the main things, like, at least from what you would kind of expect from, like, the Peter Parker Spider Man's, like, kind of the cocky attitude, the, uh, like, the witty one liners. I feel like Miles Morales is a little more, like, reserved in that aspect. This is also a game from Insomniac. Uh, from Insomniac, which was the actual studio that did like the original Spyro the Dragon games and like the Ratchet and Clank series. So I always thought that like their track record kind of speaks for itself. So they make incredible games. And one of the other things that I did notice that was a difference in the combat is they also, it looks like they have a, a combo gauge, which it seems like that was, I, I don't remember that when I played the Spider-Man for PS4. So I believe that's a new addition. And one of the things that I was kind of uh, impressed by with the, um, with the Spider-Man PS4, is after doing some of the bosses in there, they're not just really easy beat -em up bosses. Like, they're actually pretty well designed, too, in the ways that you have to figure them out and start adapting their attack patterns really well. And they do give you, like, multiple times to do that early on in the fights, and then they speed it up. So, like, the intensity builds really well in the first P uh, Spider-Man game, that I, uh, or the earlier Spider-Man PS4 game. So if it's more of the same, I think that that's pretty much perfect because it was a recipe for success for the PS4 one. Uh, I guess I, I should go. I, I, okay. Well, I was going to say, because you only have two, right, Pat? Yeah. So I guess in theory, if I have three, I should go first, right? That would make sense? Yeah. Logistically? You go last, so I just think. Yeah, I'll just save all three for the very end. <laughs> uh, no, <I'm, clears throat> mine's going to be quick anyway, because this is not like a huge, huge release. It's like a part of a really big series that I like. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Good Lord. But uh, it's not like a, a huge release in the franchise, so this won't take too long. Uh, but that's Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Uh, More like this... Kingdom Farts. Oh. oh. Okay, go on. This <laughs> fucked up you. Um, so this is like a, a rhythm game, which is very bizarre, and I don't think anyone was like expecting this to come out. Uh, but there's like a couple of cool little things about it. So this is kind of just like retelling the tell of the 
the entire saga of the game, pretty much from Kingdom Hearts 1 all the way to Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, and a lot of this story, or maybe even all of it, is told through Kairi's perspective, which I think is really interesting. It's kind of like her reflection of the story. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know who asked for that, but that's a thing I guess games can do. <laughs> so, you know, th there you go. Um, so I think it, it looks interesting. I mean, it just seems like a, a typical rhythm game, um, but you're kind of like running on a musical score through the different worlds that you travel through in these games. Um, I don't really know too much about like the speed or, or how long it's going to go. I would expect that it's going to be just like kind of a rushed retelling of the story. I mean, Kyrie spends like two of the games kidnapped, so I don't know how much of a story she really has to tell anyway. Um, Maybe but she's so just like chilling with the villains in the game. She's like half <laughs> the game is just like a dating sim where she's talking to them. I would be so down for that, to be honest with you. <laughs> a dating sim that's a rhythm game sounds concerning. You know what, though? Hey, you got to give it a shot. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> true. Um, it's true. No, but it, it looks really cool as far as all that goes. Um, the other cool thing about it is it's coming to Nintendo Switch. I guess, you know, if, if you know, I was hoping Kingdom Hearts would come to Switch. Didn't think it was going to be like this. But, you know, I guess I'll take what I can get. Um, so it is coming out like early to mid-November. I think November 13th is the official date. Um, so it looks interesting. I think it'll be interesting. Um, there's like a lot of different playable characters in it and stuff, or at least characters that are in it from like Aladdin and the main characters from Kingdom Hearts. So I don't know. It seems interesting. It's very random, but I, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into that like weird spinoff stuff. So basically what you're oh, saying no, I'm is Kyrie is the next Smash Bros. DLC character confirmed. I would lose my yeah, shit. Yeah, it's going to bypass Sora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have I, I been. I was gonna say people have been asking for Sora since like 2013. And they're like, you know what? We're gonna put Kyrie in. <laughs> Honestly, with how much that Kyrie's been neglected as a playable character, I would laugh my ass off if that's the case in Smash Bros. Because <laughs> Kyrie was only a playable character in the Kingdom Hearts Remind DLC that came out for Kingdom Hearts Three. Uh, she had a cool moveset, I will say. Um, one of the things that I was going to say about Melody of Memory is that it's kind of crazy that it took a long ass time, uh, but the Dark Seeker saga is now finally over. And this, uh, it kind of seems kind of, I think it's kind of cool that Melody of Memory is a little bit, I would say it's more of a nostalgic game for people who play those other games that can relive the parts of like Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 358 over two days. Like you see all of these characters, you see all of the older, like uh, you see like older um Disney allies as well. You also see like Dream Eaters from Dream Drop Distance too. There's also bringing in like co-op and versus matches, which I think is awesome. So as long as you played like the original Kingdom Hearts quote unquote trilogy, like I feel like, and you don't hate rhythm games, I feel like you're gonna enjoy yourself with this game no matter what. One thing that I thought was really weird when I saw the trailer is I saw like a leveling system. I have no idea how a leveling system will work in a rhythm game, but I'm really interested to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. All right, Pat, what you got for us? All right, so um, I think I'm going to go with my first one here of Avengers, which is a little weird because it's already released. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk about the Avengers game is because, I don't know if you guys have heard, uh, it's in a little bit of hot water because not a lot of people like it. I don't know if you've heard that. Um, I have. So basically, I have not played it yet. Um, I have kind of been holding off on it. Kind of like a No Man's Sky situation. I know it uh, sounds like, from what I've heard from most of my friends who have played it, uh, it's it's not that great. Uh, it was not very good at launch, and they've had a couple of updates, and it still really isn't great. So um, what I'm hoping for is when they are re-releasing it here for you know the next-gen consoles, I'm hoping that maybe they take some of this... Uh, uh, you know, the, the criticism that it's received, I'm hoping that they kind of, uh, you know, take some of that criticism and change the game and, you know, add some new content or make some changes for the re-release and, you know, maybe they can make the changes for the previous consoles as well with a patch or what, what have you, but I'm kind of hoping for that. I haven't seen anything that that's the case. Um, I've heard some rumors, but I really don't think that's going to be happening. Um, what I'm hoping for, though, you know, I've heard uh, one of my friends who's played Destiny 2 for his entire life since it's come out has said basically this Avengers game is like playing Destiny, except, uh, you know, in the way that it's like a huge loot grind, but you just never get satisfied because there's no final boss to beat. There's no, like, end game content or anything like that. It's literally just like, oh, cool, I got new loot. Let's do it again. 
<laughs> so I'm kind of hoping that maybe they can end some end or add some end game content or you know make it kind of a more enjoyable experience other than just a like really short story. <laughs> so I'm gonna like throw in like wild speculation here. I've seen it like happen with a couple of games that have happened recently. Like another example is like Fast and Furious Crossroads. I'm not sure if this is the time when like, or just another episode of people are like, video games are really popular right now. Let's try making a video game. And they don't really understand like what makes a video game good. They think that people will just see the word Avengers on there and they'll just be like, oh cool Avengers, I wanna play as Iron Man and Thor. I wanna play as the Thulk and Black Widow. Let's freaking go for it. It's like, I. There have been very few games that have, like, big names like that, like like Avengers, like, um, like some kind of big movie names, because, like, not many people, I think, understand, like, what makes, like, a good how game. you can translate a good, a good movie into a good video game, and the same freaking way, Final Fantasy's tried to make a good movie, and they failed multiple times. It's the same way where it's just, like, y you can't be masters at both, I feel, and if so, it's a extreme rarity Unless, like the fact that the sonic movie was good is kind of surprising to me the only the only other exception is uh shrek 2 the video game <laughs> <laughs> you laugh you laugh that oh, was not a joke out of it don't that worry that was not a joke that was a great game <laughs> i guess my point is is it's very rare if oh, it happens at all sure. and i think the fact that they had a lot of paid promotion can kind of go into the fact where it might hit the ground running, but like it's not going to keep any lasting players there. Oh. That's mm -hmm. what I guess that's where I'm absolutely. Going with I would agree with that for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, because like especially because like from playing it, it's like at the beginning you only get like I think what her Miss Marvel was her name or whatever, and uh, she's the only one you get to play as at the beginning. And so when I'm playing it, I'm like I was really looking forward to playing as the Avengers. That was kind of the the idea of it but I, I think it does kind of what you were saying nick where it's like okay we're gonna lock these characters and so it's like exciting you're gonna like get to unlock the avengers and play as them and so i feel like that was their whole goal was let's just make a game where you play as the avengers you unlock them you get captain america you feel awesome and then that that's it but it's it's really boring like there's actually nothing <laughs> there's like nothing to do with the characters and like the characters don't feel that different they all kind of attack the same which doesn't sound right when you got the hulk and then captain america wouldn't think they play the same but it's really it's just mashing buttons really um it's just it's repetitive and i i don't think it would have been more fun if they had a big area to explore kind of like spider-man you know um i was actually just gonna go back to spider banks like that's one of the things I know if you play it for a long time, you get that feeling, but I never felt that when I was... I haven't played Spider-Man PS4 for a long time, but I never felt that way. I felt like the bosses were... And I think this is the main difference when it just comes to, like, Avengers or, like, a pretty well-known studio like Insomniac, because Insomniac had a lot of meticulous thought to make sure it doesn't feel like those generic beat em up games that you would maybe play at an arcade or something like mm -hmm. you ha actually had to like use your webs to blind the guy, pull down columns at, like, really specific times to actually hit the guy. Like, yeah, you're just fighting the other person and technically it is more of like a beat em up kind of game but it never felt repetitive because like they kept mixing you up and making you adapt to what it's been thrown at you yeah, yeah it might get old as like you already master the game or whatnot but if it's happening in the first couple hours you're just not making a good game at that point yeah <laughs> hmm. but yeah well either way i guess i'll i'll hold on hope with you pat i'll keep my fingers crossed for it but... i would you know me like i'm the biggest avengers fan ever and i'm like i want to like this game but i just can't <laughs> Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed then for you, Pat. Hopefully they'll have like a mega patch like No Man's Sky and they'll make a 180. That'd be awesome. Okay. So my first game that I want to talk about is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Anybody who's played uh, Breath of the Wild, you know that one of the big situations, pretty much the build-up to Breath of the Wild was the hundred was the war that happened 100 years ago. Uh, Link got extremely injured. Um, Zelda pretty much had to put him in like cryostasis sleep. I don't even know if cryostasis is the right word for it, but pretty much he had to put Link in a place where he could recover and he recovers for 100 years. He comes back and Hyrule is kind of wrecked. So this game takes place 100 years before Breath of the Wild, where it actually gives you the perspective of what happened before the events of Breath of the Wild took place. So it is a prequel, but the difference is it's not like the typical Zelda combat that you would see before, or even like the Breath of the Wild revamped Zelda combat where it's like the Sheikah Slates or anything. This is along the way along the um along the lines of Dynasty Warriors. If you've played a Dynasty Warriors game, you'll probably know what that combat is like. You're taking out like hordes of enemies with a couple different buttons, but 
Uh, the difference was, I guess this isn't like the first Hyrule Warriors. Like, I think the first Hyrule Warriors, and Pat can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe the first one was, uh, was on the Wii U. And I don't know if there is a, I don't know about the story of that one, but. What wait, story? Is it, that is the right one though, right, Pat? What story? <laughs> for, okay, well, um, anyway. But yes, that, it was, was, it was on the Wii U. Um, I did own it for some reason, and I did have a lot of fun playing it, but I cannot remember a single remarkable thing about the game. <laughs> well, hopefully that this one will have more of like a story aspect, and I think it does, just based on uh, just based on what I've seen before. The cool thing about this game is, uh, I think the Zelda, um, at least for the Zelda cast, it was kind of lacking for some characters to play as, like they brought in a couple other ones. But for this one, you get to play as like the legendary warriors that you rescue from the divine beasts in Breath of the Wild. So like Daruk, Rivali, Mifa, and Arbosa, all of those characters are pretty much playable for the game. Conceptual wise, I love this idea because it gives so much context to Breath of the Wild, which I think did win Game of the Year 2017. I can't remember for sure. I still adore the game. Um, I don't know if we ever posted uh, whatever bracket video that we had about it. I think we kind of shat on it. I still think it's a fantastic game, but like it's... It's a Zelda. It's Zelda characters with Dynasty Warriors combat, and you can find Koroks around the world. So that's also fun. <laughs> All nine hundred, some of them. I have no idea. I just saw on like some gameplay clips that people have run into Koroks, and they had the same like "yaha" like voice. Oh gosh! God, <laughs> it's awful. The sound of nightmares. <laughs> it it kind of is. Huh. Yeah, I mean. It's a Warriors game, so, like, if you like killing just literally, like, 50 people in one combo, it's going to be a fun game. If that yeah. if that combat style sounds boring to you, you probably won't like it that much. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, that was what I was going to mention next, too, is, like, <laughs> I, I love the Legend of Zelda series. Like, I am almost a huge fan, a fanboy when it comes down to, like, Zelda can almost do no wrong, in my opinion. But gameplay-wise, this game does not look interesting okay. to me at all. I will offer a little bit of, of counterpoint on that, though. The first sure. the first Hyrule Warriors made zero sense. Okay? <laughs> Literally, I'm not kidding you. Like, it was set in... I don't even remember what, what area it was set in. I think it was, like, Ocarina of Time, honestly. And it made no sense. There was no point, no story in the lore, no part of the game where I was like, yeah, Link would be fighting thousands of things at one time but this new one makes sense i love it oh it does because it's like oh okay he's literally in the age of calamity when ganon is taking over the entire kingdom and there's this this apocalypse there's gonna be shit everywhere and i mm -hmm. love like that makes sense to me and that's the one thing that makes me like okay maybe i'll get this game yeah, like conceptually, it looks really, really cool. But that kind of combat where you're one person wiping like forty like lesser enemies, uh, it just doesn't appeal to me. It's just personally not my kind of gameplay style. Yeah, no, but I, it is a Zelda game, and story wise, I am definitely interested in like what happened before the Breath of the Wild. So and I think this is just what you're a saying. Cool... Is you're gonna watch somebody play through it. I might, I might just watch like the cutscenes and whatnot, just all together as like a little animated a movie. movie or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I either way, like. I think this is like the holdover for Breath of the Wild too, because I think they, I think they know that that's one of the big releases that they're anticipating, and especially with COVID, probably things are very slow. So I'm excited for Breath of the Wild too. I probably just won't get this game because the combat just doesn't interest now, me. Now, where's my Metroid Warriors game <laughs> to hold me over? Honestly, until Metroid Prime they've 4? done, they've done Fire Emblem Warriors. They've done two Hyrule Warriors to this point. Yeah. Metroid could be up there. Where's Samus? Soon. Samus has been dead for so much, such uh, such a long time. <laughs> Travis, you saw you saw the Metroid Prime Four logo. I think you're good for a couple more years. I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, are we moving on to the next game? Sure. <laughs> okay. So, do you like to shoot people? So yes. do I. Call of Duty. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, this game. The teaser trailer, I was so, so excited because it was all focused on just a campaign <laughs> that sounded really cool. And I was like, yes. And then I really haven't heard anything about the campaign since. I've seen some zombie te or teasers. I've seen some Warzone, which I am excited that they're bringing aspect of Warzone into this game because I have enjoyed playing that with 
Matt and Nick. Um, I, I play that much more than like the actual multiplayer because I don't know, Battle Royale is kind of fun. Um, and then I also did a, watch like a video of someone playing through a bunch of the online stuff when they had early access and he was saying that it felt a lot more like the Call of Duty 4 and like Modern Warfare 2 type uh, era and I'm like, perfect! So it's literally my favorite Call of Duty games is what it feels like. It seems like they're trying to emphasize a good story, which is what I enjoyed about the original Call of Duties. Mm -hmm. my, my, my hopes are high and that's what's making me scared. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this one is going to be kind of weird. I mean, it is Cold War, so it is a direct sequel to Call of Duty Black Ops. And you do have like decently iconic characters to the series that are going to be in there. Like not Captain Price, but you have like Woods, Mason, and Hudson that do have main roles in the campaign. Um, about the Warzone mode, um, it isn't going to be Infinity Ward anymore. They're actually moving that to Treyarch. So Treyarch is going to be handling that now. I believe a lot of what, if you've played like a lot of the Warzone mode, a lot of that work is going to be carried over to the new map. I don't know if that's true. I think a lot of it's speculation at this point. But I, I do know Travis is concerned because I see a lot of people going, um, getting a little excited for the zombies mode. And the more time they put into the zombies mode, I'm guessing that's less resources put into the campaign. Yep. But like... <laughs> I'll admit it. It looked it looked pretty cool to me. I mean, again, I'm not like the biggest COD player. Like, I'll play Warzone uh, just as something for uh, for us to do, just to kill time and I don't know, hang out, catch up. But it is. It does seem a little interesting. Well, I here here's my ten cents about zombies. Is like I liked the very first one because it was so simple. There was like literally just like a circle that you can really run around, and it was just like straight up who can last the longest. Then they kind of went out of their damn minds and now there's like a hidden story behind it and you have to like go through so much. Like I was just watching uh, Mike and Matt play through it. They're like, what are we doing right now? And I'm like, that's not what zombies was. It was literally, you're in this little tiny house. They're breaking in the windows. How long can you last? And now it's like, you have to like look up a guide to play zombies and that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I, well, I will say though, and I might be in the minority, I don't know, but I, I think Call of Duty has done better with their campaigns lately anyway. Um, obviously take Black Ops 4 out of that equation because that one didn't have one, oh, but, but, but if we pretend um, that one doesn't exist. I did really like um, the World War II one. Yeah, in Modern Warfare, like the, the new Modern Warfare, that one wasn't yeah. bad either. Yeah, um, it wasn't bad it wasn't yeah i'm trying to remember like a memorable moment but like i really liked doing like the spy stuff yeah it was like so different and like new to call of duty i'm like oh good they're actually trying different the, things instead the of just new the new modern warfare game was the first time in a long time that i had completed a single player campaign and then when i was done i went wow that was really good yeah no i i like, thought the story was good yeah which apparently is a rarity now because I, th I do think that they made the they made a little bit of it. I think they over. I think what uh, when Call of Duty like started focusing more on multiplayer, they overcorrected to only do the multiplayer and they neglected so much of the campaign. Yeah. Now I think they're finding the medi the the medium or medium ground. What I'm talking about, like the even ground. They're trying to they're trying to meet people both ways. Where yes, obviously they know that multiplayer is the way that they're going to make a lot of their money, especially with microtransactions and their battle passes and whatnot. But they don't want to completely neglect the people who really love the campaigns that they did. And honestly, I think that uh, I think Halo also has got to take that path too if it wants to keep some people interested. Don't because bring Halo, Halo into this. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. If, I wasn't sure if Halo went the same route too. But I'm I'm happy they're finding a middle ground because oh they they God, most certainly did. Their I multiplayer also, is pretty good, but uh, their their campaigns are becoming potato. I I do <laughs> want to also add, um, Nick. You mentioned the whole Infinity Ward Treyarch thing. Yeah. Um, in my experience now. Take this with a grain of salt because I haven't actually played... Before I played Modern Warfare, the new one, I have not played a Call of Duty game since Black Ops 2. Um, okay. But, uh, so, uh, Infinity Ward and Treyarch, they alternate games. 
-hmm. So one will be released by Infinity Ward, and then the next one will be Treyarch, and then the next one will be Infinity Ward, and then so on. That's my understanding? So, I yeah, no, sure. it is every other year, yeah. So, okay, okay. from my experience, and that's the reason I'm probably going to get Cold War, from my experience, the Treyarch games tend to be better. And generally speaking, it's uh, because of Call of Duty. My, my love of Call of Duty is like playing like the story and then also just the like messing around with your friends in like a custom game or yep, you know yep, playing uh, I'm stuff the exact like that same way as you bud that's why Treyarch games are so much better it's because they were so much better at those two things fair absolutely fair mm -hmm. all right I guess I should probably go on to mine so we don't, you know. This is going to go on for a long time. we got a lot of games still to cover. <laughs> um, this one is, like, by far and away the game I'm most excited for. Um, no one else probably gives two shits on what I'm about to talk about. But I'm excited to talk about this game. Uh, and that is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, a little bit of backstory for me. Uh, in the past, like, two years, Yakuza has easily become, like, a top three video game series that I've ever played. Um, Yakuza 0 is, like, definitely one of the top five games I've ever played now. Uh, totally, like, out of nowhere, this series just completely consumed my life. Um, I love this franchise so much. Uh, and so I'm really, really excited to play this game. I have a lot of, like, opinions on it. I'm going to keep it short because I don't think anyone else cares about this game coming out. Uh, but I'll share a little bit on, like, just how I feel. Uh, so the Yakuza franchise has always been kind of, I don't want to call it a beat-em-up, but it's an action RPG-style game with uh, just normal combat. You go around, you beat the shit out of people. Um, you're, like, overpowered. It's not like a, a beat-em-up in the sense that, like, Hyrule Warriors, where you're killing 40 at once. But it's, it's a bit exaggerated where, like, you'll go into, like, a Yakuza clan meeting and, like, beat the shit out of, like, 50 people. Um, but it, it's really fun, and I think the game makes fun of itself a lot. Uh, the main character has always been this guy named Kiryu, who is, like, this overly serious guy. You know, he's, like, one of those tough mafia guys. And then we'll go and jerk off to porn in the middle of a theater. Uh, like, he's just... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he's just this... Like, he, his personality is off the wall. Uh, and so it's, it's hilarious because he's so serious. Uh, but it, it's like, it's something I've grown to love is the characters, the combat. The reason I'm bringing this up is because the new Yakuza game is nothing like that at all. Um, the, the main character, Kiryu, has been the main character of the first seven games in the franchise. At least the main games. Um, he's not going to be the main character of this game. Uh, like I said about the combat with the fun beat-em-up style, uh, the new Yakuza game is a turn-based combat. Um, two very bold moves. They're basically, um, they basically said that they're trying to overhaul the franchise um, and try to like turn it into a different direction, kind of like a kind of like a soft reboot of the series in a way. Um, so they're bringing in a new character, bringing in a new type of combat. Um, from what I have heard, this game has already been released in Japan, but it's still like there's not a ton of reviews out for it either for some reason. Um, but people seem to enjoy the combat system for what it is, but it, it's such a drastic turn from before. That it's kind of one of those like tough to swallow pills in terms of this is not what we've grown accustomed to because even the location is different um it's always taken place in camarocho um and now it's in a completely different city as well so they they've changed a lot now there are some characters that are still in it uh majima's in it which is awesome for those of you that don't know he's this insanely hilarious character um so they did keep some like remnants of the older games in it um and from what i've seen in this game they still have a lot of like the wackiness and randomness of like just going to clubs and dancing or doing karaoke or finding call girls or whatever right this game is always just had the most random nonsense ever um and so i think it's a lot of fun um and, and from what i'm seeing this game looks like it'll be fun it's just such a drastic shift um that i think people are going to you know find it to be um a bit hard to swallow i guess you know as is the case is with any game that does this is it only the combat? Like, is it like a Final Fantasy thing where they went active time to like this real time kind of kind of strategy? I'm not sure. Like, like is it that much of a drastic difference where you feel like it will alienate people? Um, I don't think it will alienate people only because this franchise is already kind of niche. Um, it's not like okay. when Paper Mario made a drastic switch or anything, you know, where it's like, oh, like, cause like I don't I don't know any casual players that play like Yakuza is pretty. Um, like either you love it or you never heard of it you know and so i feel like it's not going to alienate people as much as it's just going to maybe annoy some people 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious because, like, I those drastic kind of combat shifts usually cause a, a divide in the player base, at least from what I've seen. Like, Paper Mario is a great example of one. Um, Final Fantasy is a great example of one. And then you have people that argue when when stuff like that doesn't happen, like when you get to like series like Pokemon, they get mad when you don't do that. So I guess I'm, I'm very. That's why I was uh, wondering if it will kind of cause like a schism. But I don't. Considering what you're saying about like how how niche the group is that play the games, I don't think that it that they would try to get divided on something like this. I don't know. I. I don't know much about the Yakuza uh, series. All I know is that I kept getting it confused with the Shenmue games. That's the only thing I know about them. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, and I do think, like, uh, I think part of the reason people won't get upset is, like, it was pretty pretty known they were going to do this. They said, all right, the next game, it, it's not it doesn't, it's not even called Yakuza 7. It's just Yakuza Like a Dragon. So it, it almost feels like a spinoff game. I have a feeling some people don't even know that it's, like, technically the next installment um, just because of the <laughs> way they're, like, advertising it. So... Um, but it, it feels like a completely new direction, so I think that's why people aren't as upset. It's not like they're saying, like, all right, we're going to keep doing Kiryu's story, but now it's different. It's like, no, we're rebooting everything. Kiryu's story, I guess, is done. I guess they're turning that off, and now it's like, okay, now we're just focused on this guy in kind of a new environment. But I think the other thing people love about this game, like I said, is kind of the randomness. Like, from what I've seen, like, this game has, like, this side quest that's supposed to be, like, a Pokemon parody. Um, and, like, they have, like, Final Fantasy-like things. So it's, like, it, it has a lot of just, like, weird, wacky, like, stuff in it. And I think that's what makes people really like this franchise. And they definitely still have that. So it still has the charm of the franchise. Just, like, a different battle system, really. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. All right, so I forgot the order. Did I go before Pat or did Pat go before me? I think it's Pat. Okay. All right, Pat, go. All right, I'll go ahead with my second game then. Or, or I guess uh, we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm. Reebok, Reebok Sorry, shoe line horn. announced. <laughs> I shit you not. I did just read an article stating that they're making Reebok shoes based on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know if this has been established yet on our channel, but I used to be a very big fan of Assassin's Creed. Um, played probably thousands of hours of, of all the other games combined. Um, actually, I'm replaying all of the Ezio collection right now just for fun because I got it on PS4. <laughs> um, and Black Flag was probably my favorite. I have not played an Assassin's Creed game since 2015, and they come out with a new one every year. I have not done that simply because 2015 Assassin's Creed Syndicate, great game, but that was the last one that they released that made sense. <laughs> All of the other ones make no sense because they are basically unwriting... From my understanding, anyway, don't get me wrong. I haven't played them, so take it with a grain of salt. If you if you have played them and want to correct me in the comments, feel free. But from my understanding, they have basically unwritten the first game because in the first game they established that they are like the first assassins, okay? And that's happening like in the the 12th century, right? And if you're going back to Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey and stuff like that back in like prehistory, almost, you know. How how are we having assassins in, you know, in that sort of timeline? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I get that they use DNA from other people, whatever. I will get into the logistics of that. But the reason um, I'm interested in Valhalla, um, it still doesn't make any sense because it still takes place, I believe, in like the ninth century and it's uh, Viking times. So really, like, imagining the Vikings having a secret society of assassins who are highly organized and stuff like that doesn't really make sense to me. However, the concept of Vikings and that part of history is one of my favorite time periods. So that's basically the only reason I want to play this game. <laughs> um, I don't know much about the story um, other than the time period it's set in. And I do know one other thing that's really interesting um, and kind of makes me, leads me to believe that maybe this story won't be too impactful or, you know, overly important. Um, 
you kind of have the ability to control what your character looks like in this one. So you have a li little bit of customization, which is actually unique to Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. um, every other Assassin's Creed game that's come out ever has one main character, or maybe two, um, that you play as. You get no sorts of customization or, you know, personalization other than just, you know, the outfit that they're wearing, right? So you can't, you know, you can't name them, you can't change their name, you can't change their height, weight, skin color, anything like that. Um, this one, still not so much. It does still give you a name. Um, you know, it gives you a family name and then stuff like that, because obviously, if they're connected to the main character, the main, you know, the original guy, they have to be, you know, related. So you get a name, you get a family name, everything like that. But you can choose if you're going to be a male or female character, and that's still kind of unique. So I wonder if they're trying to test out that sort of customization idea, and maybe they'll expand on that further. But, um, I mean, overall, from what I've seen in the initial, like, gameplay and, and tra trailers and teasers and stuff, the combat looks really, really fun and engaging. Um, and from my experience with Assassin's Creed, it's not always overly fun or fluid, and it's really glitchy, and there's a lot of problems, and it really takes you out of the experience. And so far, I've been seeing a lot of really clean, like, graphics and animations and stuff like that, so I'm just very excited to hopefully be back in the Assassin's Creed franchise I'm really hoping this game doesn't disappoint me. Yeah. Mike, did they, did they take a break from uh, Odyssey to this one? I forget. They took a year off, yeah. Um, okay, so I remember you said that them taking a year off was really good for Assassin's Creed Origins, so I was wondering what your take was for uh, for Valhalla as well. So, well, I'll say this, right? Um, so, Pat, I haven't answered your question that you asked earlier. Uh, I, it's not probably going to be a satisfying answer. Um, but at the end of Origins with your, like, brotherhood and, like, the timeline question, it's like, the way Origins ends, right, is, uh, they get together as a group of assassins, but they are not an official brotherhood yet. So, they do assassin things together, but from what I understood in there, they weren't actually officially the brotherhood yet, until, like, I guess a thousand plus years later. Um, so I guess that was their loophole in the system of, okay, we're a brotherhood, but we're not THE brotherhood yet. Um... So gotcha. I guess there you go. Uh, but I, I guess it's like a technicality. You know, I'll buy a technicality. Here's, like. here's my question, right? I want to know. I just want, give me like a, a documentary, if you will, Ubisoft. This is what I want, Ubisoft. <laughs> Mark it, write it down, write it in your notes. I want a documentary of how the ancient Egyptians came together, made some sort of brotherhood, then passed that on to the, um, also to like the Greeks, like, 200 years later and then like a thousand years later the vikings are then also part of that group and then it goes back to the middle east and then they become the real assassins brotherhood i want to <laughs> know you tell me that timeline of how that happens and i will buy every game and i'll play it and i'll buy every microtransaction you want you tell me that i will do Pat, it here it is <clears throat> aliens are actually the first brotherhood <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, Pat, so uh, you bring up a good point because, like, like so Origins comes out and it says that. I'm like, okay, fine. So this is, like, the origin story. And then Odyssey actually takes place 400 years before Origins. Really? So, yeah. So why was Assassin's Creed Origins called Origins? And then they go 400 years before that in Odyssey. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so this is, like, the original origin story? Um, and that game said nothing. I think that game was just about an artifact and wasn't even about, like, the brotherhood in any way um i it, yeah but, but my thing is i'm kind of like well i guess you didn't say this my take with assassin's creed is i couldn't give two shits about this like actual story um i play these games because <laughs> i like exploring rome and like italy and uh greece and egypt like origins was one of my favorite games just because i liked running around in ancient egypt um i could not care at all about the other story um i play these games because i like the settings i like playing as these people um, I honestly get annoyed when they go into, like, present time or when they talk about these artifacts only because, like, I, I like the history behind it. Um, and so kind of like you, that's why I'm excited about Valhalla, too, is I love the idea of the Vikings. Um, and going back to what Nick asked, like, I think this year off was great because Odyssey was fun, but it was a carbon copy of what Origins was. Like, down mm -hmm. to, like, 
the UI, the combat, it was, you could not tell the difference other than the fact that it's in Greece. And even some of the cities in Greece look like they were from fucking Egypt. Like it, 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 it <laughs> oh it, sure, yeah. It's just like it just looked like they copy pasted and then like scribbled out the pyramids and made it greener and put like the Parthenon and stuff. I'm like, oh okay, I guess that so, works. I think I I would tend to agree with you when it comes to like the the games itself. It's really fun to explore the the you know the different scenarios and different t history and different periods of time and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think up until Assassin's Creed Three. Which, which is weird because it's like the fifth game in the franchise. But mm -hmm. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Three, up until then, the story was impeccable. It was amazing. Oh yeah, it was yeah, great. It w they had a really awesome arc, and then minor spoiler, actually not really minor, massive spoiler. They kill the main character. <gasps> um. <laughs> so I guess if you wanted to, uh, uh, not know that, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, but they they do kill like the main character in the main uh, you know modern day timeline, and after that every game the story is irrelevant because it's just bad. So they're I feel like they're now just kind of relying on exactly what you said of of making the game beautiful and making it fun to explore because it's mm -hmm. the story is just beyond repair. Yeah, well, like in Origins, you are the main character, so like there's not even a guy. It's like they're talking to like you. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. So Desmond is gone, and now it's me, Mike. That's the main character. Like, what the hell is that? Like, okay, yeah, um, yeah, it's weird. So I, but honestly, in Origins and Odyssey, they really don't even talk about it like at all. Um, there's like small sequences of it. Uh, they, I think they pretty much realized, oh, we kind of screwed up when we killed him off. Let's uh, just pretend like that's barely a part of our game now. <laughs> um, so yeah, because I don't even remember it at all in Odyssey. I know there was, but I could I couldn't even tell you. It might have been like ten minutes of like the forty hour story. So yeah, I don't know. I and I haven't like for Valhalla in the trailers they haven't shown any of that from what I've seen. No. Uh, yeah, they're they're really focused on the Viking, which is good because that's the part that I enjoy. Um, so yeah, I think I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I think the combat looks great. It looks a lot heavier. Um, it doesn't seem like just like traditional sneak up and kill. I feel like they have a lot more Viking combat, obviously. Um, I like the fact that there will be some ocean play in there, too. So it, it looks great. I'm really excited for this. All right. Are we moving on to our final game? Uh, well, I have one more, too. Oh, you mean final each? Well, I guess fi my final Yeah. That's a better way to say it. I know you got one more. <laughs> I forgot about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, either way, I'll, I'll talk about this. This is probably one of the most anticipated releases that I've had for this entire year. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I'm pretty sure it's coming out in November. It was, oh, it's Cyberpunk 2077. It was originally scheduled to come out in March, but because of COVID and the whole pandemic and a lot of things, it got, it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed and pretty much they arrived all the way to November now. And I believe it's like November 12th or something. You'll see the day, the day on the, uh, on the screen, but it's finally happening. This has been pretty much CD Projekt Red's like big project ever since Witcher 3. And for people who aren't uh, aren't aware, Witcher 3 was crazy, crazy popular. It was a huge hit. And everybody was going crazy, like, oh my gosh, CD Projekt Red's freaking amazing, uh, blah, 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 blah. And Cyberpunk 2077 kind of has a lot of the same aspects that were very good and worked very well for Witcher 3. One of it being open world, but instead of it being more of an RPG focused game, this one is more shooter focused. Um, our main character is a guy uh, is a guy named V, which he has a one of a kind implant in his body exoskeleton. I don't know what you call it. They're like kind of like half human, half kind of robots for this kind of a style of game, um, half robot. But he has a, a kind of an implant that has the key to immortality, and just by the world and the characters, at least from what they've created as a starting point, it seems to be a complete open door for a ton of possibilities down the road. So in terms of customization, um, how they're, uh, like what attachments you can give to them, what you could use to level up, the different ways that they're gonna interact, and at least it's not gonna be like a typical, say you're, I don't know, I don't know what a situation is gonna be in the game, but if, if you're gonna rob a bank, it's not going to be a normal thing where you just like, try to shoot people or something like that, you might actually have a have an attachment that can take them out. I have no idea. I think one of the things that I'm so excited about this game for is the fact that because of Witcher 3 and other games that CD Projekt Red has developed, they have a very good track record. And so 
it seems like the extra time that they put into uh, for Cyberpunk 2077 is just helping that out. And the fact that you kind of have a blank canvas of a game where a lot of games that I've loved that have been like really big budget games, games like Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I don't know, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Spider-Man PS4, um, some of like the biggest games have kind of followed that same kind of template, but I don't know, this one feels like a little more gritty, it feels more futuristic, it has its own style to it, there's a lot of things that have made me have made me excited about like the cyberpunk image that they've created that a lot of other art styles can't do anymore because like you've already gone into the past like people have done cavemen people have done uh futuristic robot stuff like with near automata and whatnot but this is a different this feels like a different take on an already established big budget formula and i think it's going to be played out really well based on the cd project red having the minds that they have i just have two words that's it. I have I have just two words when it comes to. Cyberpunk. Is it a name? It is a name. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, maybe. <laughs> Who's badass. that? That is true. Keanu Reeves is is in the game. Uh, <laughs> I think he's that? dead though. Oh, is I think dead? I think uh, I think the character Keanu Reeves, uh, Johnny Silverhand. If I remember my lore right, I think he's a hologram in this game. Oh. So I think he's like. Oh my been, god, he's Tupac. Because he was like. My understanding is is he was like a uh, like some sort of revolutionary, and that was like a hundred years before or something. So it was super uh, super dead, but he did a lot, so everyone knows who he is. I mean, honestly, like I'd be a hundred percent down with that. Um, the one of the main things that this game I know is getting like some some like minor criticism on is the fact that. Um, is the fact that, uh, like, it's it's an industry practice, and I'm not going to focus on it for too long, but they said they wouldn't end up putting their workers through crunch, and they ended up having to do it at the very end. They delayed the game for so long for that express purpose, but it looks like they're still going to have to do it. So, it's not it's not ideal, um, but I do think in terms of companies that don't push their employees to the breaking point, like the Activisions or like the, um, or, uh, or like the EAs or something like that, CD Projekt Red isn't as bad, but then again, it's like a lesser of an evil is still kind of an evil, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough because this game, people haven't been anticipating for such a long time. It has already has like um, a ton of people excited about it. It's one of the first games in a long, long time that I ended up actually pre-ordering. So I'm, I'm aboard the hype train. I hate to say it, but I don't think this game's actually going to disappoint, which is very, very rare for me to like not have some level of skepticism to go in for going into a game like this, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I still, I still think it's not even going to be released in a couple weeks. I still think they're <laughs> going to push it back again, honestly. Would not surprise me. You're just in disbelief. I mean, honestly, if it, if, if, uh, if it's rushed, I mean, if it's delayed more for it to be better, I'm okay yep, with that. Fine with me. Yeah, that's why I, was I have learned, for. I have learned from No Man's Sky, I would rather have a game a year late than have it done half-assed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I feel like I feel like so many of the games nowadays, especially with how many games are out, you have that one chance, that one chance for to grab your attention and for you to play through that game. If they miss that chance and you moved on to a different one, it's hard for you to find that back unless like a friend is telling you to come back mm -hmm. to the game or something like that. Or you have to have some kind of other reason to revisit a game. But yeah, I'm with you, Pat. As long as it's good on release, then I'm fine with it. I'm fine with being mr v and doing some cool shit with some futuristic attachments i have never played a cyberpunk game before i'm excited for it yeah mm -hmm. yeah it looks fun last last thing i will say it's it's they're cha they're pulling this over from a tabletop game which is really cool they don't uh i didn't know yeah that. when they when they translate tabletop games into real games they tend to be bad i.e every D D game i've ever played <laughs> they're not good so i'm hoping this one is good Mm -hmm. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be great. Um, All right, Mike, bring us on just... home. <laughs> All right, well, this is kind of an anticlimactic one to end on, I think. Um, but I don't know, actually. I guess this is kind of a big release. Uh, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, there's a game coming out called Godfall. Uh, that sounds intense as shit. Um, this game is an action RPG style game. Uh, it's being developed by a company called Counterplay Games. Uh, it, it's like one of the new games for PS5, and it's also coming out for PC. Uh, it's one of the, uh, what's that, launch release uh, for the PlayStation 5. 
And We're going to kill God. Dude, I honestly... <laughs> <laughs> um, it, dude, the characters in the game look like they are. They like their outfits are. It's a little bit extreme. I'm not gonna lie. Um, from what I've heard about this game so far, and from what I've seen on it, I, I've heard it's basically like an easy version of of Dark Souls, in that like the bosses are intense, and you have to try to use like dodge rolls and blocks to kind of get out of the way. And if you make like one wrong move, you're like basically dead. Uh, you have to like be very careful with your attacks, kind of go through things slowly. But on the plus side, from what people have seen from bosses, bosses have shields and health bars, and I believe it is only the health bar that regenerates. So it actually kind of saves your progress to a certain point in the middle of a boss fight. Um, so it's a little more forgiving than, say, a game like Dark Souls would be, uh, where like Dark Souls, you lose to a boss and it completely screws you up. Um, so, you know, I, I, from that perspective, it does seem a little bit nice. Um, it, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Just looking at the setting in it, um, looking at the characters, their outfits, their designs, the enemies. Um, it, it just it looks like an absolutely amazing game. Um, there are a couple of weird things about it, though, that I'd like to point out. The first one being it is a single-player RPG game, though there is co-op in it. Um, but even if you're playing it by yourself, you have to be connected to the Internet at all times. Um yeah. yeah, which is weird. I don't like that. You know, and it doesn't make sense because, like, Destiny makes sense. Destiny, you're, it's an online co-op game. It's a live service game. Uh, Godfall is not. And they've repeatedly said it is not a live service game, but you have to be uh, on live the entire time. So I, I, I don't understand why. And they've been so weird as to, like, why that is a requirement. They've never really, like, officially said that there's, like, a purpose for it. It's, just, it's very strange. Um, and so people have been worried, like, oh, so do I need PS Plus to play the game? It's, like, it, it's strange. And then people were confused about the resolution. Like, rumors came out that, oh, it's going to be 120 FPS. And they said, no. Nah. It's like there's just a lot of, like, bizarre things floating around with the game um, that makes me nervous. That, like, as great as it looks, it's like, oh, there's a lot of misinformation going around. This game's probably going to suck. Uh, it, it seems like it's going down the anthem rabbit hole of, Oh, it looked great on release trailer, and then it turns out to be a hot pile of garbage on release day. So I'm hoping it comes out good, because I love this style of game, but uh, it, it, it has me really nervous, um, just with like the little things I've been hearing about it. So I don't know. So I don't know if maybe it like, uh, is kind of like a Dark Souls 3 situation, where um, I don't know that you have to be absolutely connected to the internet for that, but I know what they do in that is... Um, It'll show you kind of like a, a, a ghost or a shade of like other players that are doing the same thing you are. So mm -hmm. like maybe maybe that's kind of the same situation of like oh look at there's like six people here trying to fight this same boss and they're also sucking at this you know. Um, so yeah. maybe that that is sort of like the the reasoning for having to play online or you know maybe there's some sort of uh, I don't know like data tracking or like timing or something that they need to to maintain online those would be my only ideas but it's still strange I, mm -hmm. I mean it makes sense but it also alienates people that don't have good internet connection i mean we're fortunate enough that we live in a place with the infrastructure that can handle it but like i don't know you're, you're living in the middle of like bumfuck nowhere iowa i don't think you're gonna get the same connection yeah it's true yeah well and it's just it's not even like it's just if it was a live service game i'd get it because like i don't think um, it, it just seems like it, so because I thought that too, Pat. I was like, oh, maybe it has a feature like that. But then I, I was thinking, but why then is there not an option to just not have internet and then Turn you don't off. get that? Yeah. yeah, it seems weird. Like they would require it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So it, that was weird. Um, and again, like uh, like if that was not a thing and they didn't have this other weird stuff going on, like I would be, and I I still am. I'm super pumped for this game. It looks like it's going to be amazing. Just the color pops the. The detail and everything it's just like that's a concerning first step i feel like even before release so i don't know i mean outside of that the gameplay looks fun it's very like you have to be on your toes and focused and i love games like that like i love bloodborne and ghost of tsushima and like games that are not just hack and slash you have to plan your combat um and this looks like it's right in line with that i just hope it ends up being good and that this online requirement doesn't end up being more than meets the eye I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, and that, that's all I got. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for sticking with us. Again, it was a really big month. That's why we talked about these games for a while. 
and there are a lot of games that we are excited about, but there's a comment section for you guys to tell us what games you're excited about or which ones that you've been getting. I know for a fact that uh, after seeing some of the comments, I know at least a couple of us are super excited for Cyberpunk, a couple of us are excited for Assassin's Creed as well. So I would like to know which ones uh, you plan on getting, possibly ones we didn't even mention. Also, comment section below. Um, oh, sorry. Also, in the comments, tell me what color uh, Valhalla Rebox you're going to get. Mine's <laughs> going to be purple. <laughs> All right, and make sure that you show off those picks to Pat because Pat wants to know about what sweet kicks you're going to get. Pat just wants your feet picks. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, uh, well, technically they're feet, they're shoe picks. Whatever, <laughs> we're done. Uh, thank you for joining us, and don't make it weird. Bye. Bye.